parents are trying to do their very best for their children. They want to do the right things, but sometimes our gut instinct may not necessarily be compliant with the laws of the land. Here to help us clear up what we can and can't do, we welcome Lisa to the show. So Lisa Mendicino is a criminal lawyer from the law firm Slater & Gordon. She's been practicing criminal law for 14 years, providing legal advice and representing a broad range of clients in court proceedings. But as well as being a legal expert, Lisa is also a mum herself to two young children. So thank you so much for coming, Lisa. Oh, thanks for having me, Sally Ann. That's all right. Now, one of the things, I was on radio a couple, a couple of months ago and they were talking about it being illegal to keep children in the car while you go and pay for petrol. Is this right? Is this what the law says? No, the law doesn't say that at all. The law says that you can't leave your child unattended for an unreasonable amount of time. And I would have thought that going to the petrol station, leaving your kids in the car, making sure that the car door is locked, of course, um, it's not unreasonable. Yeah. yeah. So what about then when you think about the not leaving them for unreasonable amounts of time, what about letting our children walk to school? Because I guess we're not with them when we let them do that. Is that considered unreasonable? I wouldn't have thought so, Sally Ann. Um, I, I really think that the um, the offence of leaving a child unattended is really intended for those parents who leave their children at home and go out at night, for example, and they're very young, or um, for example, leaving them in a in a very hot car for, for hours at a time. Um, I really think walking to school is not going to contravene the law. Okay. So, have any of you had any issues with having to, you know, leave the children behind somewhere, or wondered whether something's not right. I know at different times I've actually run into the supermarket when my children were young and, and actually I had a woman stand next to my car waiting for me and my children, my oldest was actually 14, so 14, 12, 10 and 8 and she abused me when I got there. Have any of you had any issues with people getting upset with you or? No. I, I've certainly got, gotten upset if I've seen children in a hot car and um, you know I've actually stood there, not, not to be angry but I've actually stood there and just waited and just, you know, not made it obvious, but just to make sure someone's coming back within a reasonable time. So I think it, it comes down to common sense, doesn't it? And we would hope yeah, that everyone would have common sense. Mm. Um, I know that's not always the case, but um, considering children walking to school, I think if you, you know, you've actually gone through some procedures and what would happen if you felt like you were unsafe or you felt like someone was following you or a car came up, if you actually talk through some scenarios with the kids, I think, you know, it's important at age appropriate times to allow them to to do things like that. And actually I think one of the differences these days is that we have technologies. We have mm. mobile phones, so children mm. walking to and from school probably have that. What about your, because you have a five-year-old at I have a five-year-old and one in grade four, so four and grade nine and five. Uh, I would always, that they don't walk to school okay. um, because I'd like to know they get there and I'm usually coming from the secondary school run, so it's a little bit time consuming. But uh, the preppy hasn't yet walked home, but as they get a bit older, last year I had a grade six do it, and I allow them to walk home because I know they get home. Mm. Otherwise I search. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, look, another issue I guess with parenting is smacking. So we often you know, wonder if that's, is it illegal? I know it is in some countries. Is it illegal? What are the laws around smacking? Well, smacking is technically speaking an assault. Um, however, um, you can um, rely on, on having a lawful excuse and the lawful excuse being that you're lawfully physically disciplining your child. Um, the law basically says that, um, and, and the laws differ from state to state, but ultimately it's all about what's reasonable. Um, and I think that these days um, perhaps um, societal norms are such that um, smacking perhaps is not tolerated as much as it was in the past. And I've certainly experienced um, clients who have gotten into trouble for smacking their children in a very significant way in a shopping centre and being um, arrested by the police and, and being charged with um, assault. Wow. Because wow. another thing, there's a show that's called The Slap and that's where you where someone smacks someone else's child, so that's a contentious issue. The last really thing I wanted to ask while we've got you here is about the laws on drinking. Adolescent drinking, my children are a little bit older now so I don't have to worry, but some of you will have children who are in that age group where you wonder, can they drink or not? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, they can drink in the home. 
Um, however, in Victoria, there, there is a law that says that um, you can't have other children's uh, other pe children drinking in your home um, unless of course you have the consent of the, 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 the parents of those children. So um, you have to be a bit careful there and also th there's an expectation in all states that parents are responsible in the way that they manage um, the drinking of alcohol in their home by underage. And I understand one of the things that my children have all said is that um, with that it's written consent and we have to worry about who's really signing those forms, is that...? Well, it, no, it doesn't have to be written consent, but if you're the parent who ends up um, being investigated by the police, then you have to be the one to prove that in fact the consent was given. Okay. So, um, but it doesn't have to be written. Okay, look, thank you so much, Lisa, for, for talking to us about all the legal issues. Thank you to the rest of you for, for taking the time to come and be part of the show. And thank you for watching The Sally Ann Show. We hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did and we want your feedback. So please contact us on our Facebook page or follow me on Twitter. Until next time, I'm Sally Ann.